Hey, what's up? This is Joe. I'm in uh, Sturgis, South Dakota, just a few days before the annual Black Hills Motorcycle Rally. I wanted to do something a little different in this video and, uh, and give you the ride to Sturgis uh, in one piece in its completion from start to finish. Uh, basically in the past, I've uh, just sort of ended up with so much footage that it's kind of been easier to sort of uh, break everything up into sections and give it to you that way. As I was going back and sort of reviewing, I had something like 10 and a half hours of footage uh, from my GoPro and my phone. And it occurred to me just what an epic journey it is to, uh, to go halfway across the country on a motorcycle. It was like 1,700 miles, but really, I mean, back in the day, 1,700 miles was a lot. And, uh, and you see a lot in between from start to finish uh, of that 1,700 miles. So I wanted to sort of give it to you in one piece, just to sort of give you a feel of what a huge undertaking it is to, uh, to embark on a journey like that. I whittled it down to about 42 minutes, which is still the longest video I've ever made. And I guess if there's anything to get out of this video, it would be when you live on a motorcycle or you just take a motorcycle trip uh, across country, you really experience the full spectrum of humanity, uh, good, bad, ugly, everything in between, as well as a lot of variation within the natural world, uh, cultural differences, uh, personalities, all that stuff. Uh, you just experience it kind of like uh, amplified. So with that being said, if you enjoy this video, please hit like and subscribe. And as usual, I've included an optional donate link in the drop box if you'd like to contribute to this project. Otherwise, enjoy the ride. Right around the middle of July, I start getting butterflies in my stomach at the coming of the Black Hills Motorcycle Rally in Sturgis, South Dakota. I love the culture of South Dakota, working my gig with Memphis Shades, meeting folks, hanging out with friends and camping in the Black Hills. Safe to say at this point, it's a bit like home. I started my journey in Virginia and headed across the Appalachian Mountains to Moorhead, Kentucky. Almost from the time I left, I fell in love with my new bike, the Honda NC750X. About uh, 70 miles in, I'm in West Virginia. I gotta say, I have been really impressed. This bike's a lot more comfortable at higher speeds than I thought it would be and packed up. Uh, I thought it would really be struggling. It handles all the weight, no problem. It just uh, rides good, the balance is great. I pushed on towards Moorhead, Kentucky, where I'd heard about some free dispersed camping located within the Daniel Boone National Forest. I guess I've ridden about 150 miles. I just got a little bit of gas. I, you know, I was down to like a half a tank and uh, came out to about 68 miles per gallon. So, uh, you know, and it runs on 86 octane. So I'm, I'm back to the uh, the regular stuff. You know, in times where the gas prices go up, less people are buying uh, plus and premium. So uh, that stuff tends to sit there. The ethanol absorbs water. You know, now I'm back to uh, regular gas and excellent gas mileage. So I'll take it. Verdant green vines off to my left are an invasive weed called kudzu. It's all too common in this part of the country and has a tendency to overtake and suffocate any plants, trees, and bushes in its wake. There was an effort to encourage consumption of this invasive plant, which never really caught on, but supposedly it's pretty tasty both as a food and in tea. 
still in the state of Kentucky, just at the sort of northern uh, foothills of the mountains, as you can see. I hear there's a bunch of dispersed camping uh, up here, uh, about 40 minutes, so I'm uh, just doing my grocery shopping, getting prepared. It's kind of bittersweet to be leaving the mountains where I grew up, but damn, like, uh, it's been a cold ride. Uh, all morning I've been wearing my heavy jacket, uh, just absolutely freezing. I just took it off, now I'm starting to actually burn up a little bit, but um, man, I don't miss the weather. cool little spot out here in Kentucky absolutely started to roast I'm uh, technically in the foothills of the Appalachians on the uh, western side as soon as I got down in elevation instantly it was absolutely burning up back home in Virginia I was complaining how cold it was this place is absolutely free dispersed camping along the side of this like kind of a pond looking thing on the map, it looked like an oxbow stream, a river or something, but it doesn't look like it's flowing to me. It looks more like a lake or a pond or something. But man, this looks fishy. I was uh, a little concerned having everything packed on this, but uh, man, I was just impressed all day long you know rode like 300 miles today wasn't really that tired uh, at the end of it uh, handled great the turbulence uh riding behind trucks and stuff i could feel the turbulence like up here and uh, on my chest and shoulders but uh the bike just absolutely stayed true i think because it's just such a low center of gravity i spent the next day in camp working on my video with no cell service to speak of i love this kind of camping it could be argued that smartphones are one of the ills of Western society, and it's a point I'm inclined to agree with. While they've contributed a lot of good in terms of dissolving cultural barriers, as well as keeping everyone connected, I feel there's been a huge cost to much of the world in terms of mental health, and in particular the youth. There's simply too much money to be made from keeping you on the thing as long as possible. Headed into town uh, yesterday and uh, got my video uploaded, scheduled and all that. It was just easier to just kind of come back here because I already knew where this place was. But uh, I came back, everything was completely a mud puddle. Everything's muddy, everything gets dirty. There's no getting around it. Things are gonna be dirty. You're gonna be packing some stuff up, it's gonna be dirty. If I was clean all the time, I'd be the clean motorcycle vagabond. But since I'm living in the woods, I'm the dirty motorcycle vagabond. Anyway. Let's go. As I mentioned before, I was really excited about the route I'd chosen as it would take me through several states I'd never been. One of these was Ohio, and once I was in the vicinity of Cincinnati, there was one thing I absolutely had to try. So I'm just outside of a uh, Midwest institution. This is Skyline Chili. I've uh, never been to one of these, but uh, uh, I've seen them on TV, so let's go check it out. Uh, started in Cincinnati. Tons of uh, uh, cheddar cheese, chili, 
and pasta, spaghetti noodles. It's probably not the healthiest thing in the world, but when in Rome, you gotta do as the Romans do. So that's what I'm about to do. The smell coming off of this is uh, absolutely fantastic. That's awesome. Slightly sweet, got a hint of cinnamon. Really good. Wow, that was uh, absolutely fantastic. You know, certain other types of chilies could be a little more hearty and uh, with chunks of beef and stuff like that. The beef was like chopped up really fine. And it was a little watery, but that's probably from excess uh, water from the pasta. The service wasn't great. Uh, anytime I wanted something, I had to like literally like flag the waitress down. So that kind of sucked, but uh, ultimately it was worth it. I mean, the cheese, the pasta, and the sweetness of the fine chili uh, just all went together awesome. Apparently this uh, is a Cincinnati institution that was started sometime around 1949. It's like no other chili in the world. Man, that skyline was some damn good chili. I mounted my new steed and headed across the Ohio River. I can't say much about the state of Indiana since I frankly passed through it pretty quick. But there's a meditative quality about riding through the Midwest with its wide open spaces that I really like. In this type of country, you can just sort of sit back and let your mind take a rest. Once I got to Illinois, I was ready to find somewhere to hunker down and shower after being filthy for the past three days. I located a campground in Kickapoo State Park for 10 bucks and headed towards Danville. My criteria for campgrounds is simple. If I'm on route and the price is 10 bucks or less, I'll do it. Otherwise, I'd have to be pretty desperate. A hotel, at least in the States, is a very rare treat. And for that to happen, I better be caught in some seriously shitty weather or damn well done something to deserve it. Kickapoo State Park in the state of Illinois. I almost forgot because usually when I think of Illinois, I don't think of all this lush forest woods and stuff. It's $10 a night for a site without electricity, which is uh, these days about as cheap as you can get uh, in the United States, especially for a state park. That uh, figure is uh, pretty incredible. So I, uh, I rode about 350 miles today, did a lot of it on the highway, on the interstate. Uh, even though, as you know, I hate those. The bike handled great at higher speeds. Um, I was riding through a headwind pretty much all day. So typically when you're riding through a headwind, uh, especially on the interstate, you're gonna get a lot of turbulence from uh, any kind of passing trucks, passing vehicles and things like that. And I certainly felt a lot of turbulence, but I didn't feel it in the bike. The design of that motor, where so much of the weight is down low and forward, you know, the, the cylinder's shooting out at an angle just like that. And then with the gas tank being under the seat, it's just, and I'm saying this tentatively, I don't want to jinx myself, but it is one of the best riding bikes uh, on the interstate that I've ever been on. Right now I'm taking advantage of the sunshine, drying everything out. I was on a forum, like a motorcycle camping forum, and uh, somebody asked the question, what do you do when it's time to leave and all your stuff is wet? It seems like such an obvious question, but the answer, while it would be ideal to dry out all your stuff and then hit the road, sometimes you just have to pack everything up wet and uh, there's no getting around it. And when that happens, I just usually try to uh, stop somewhere and dry everything out as quick as I can, pack it back up. In this case, I just kept riding and uh, knew that I would dry it out at some point.
In addition to the sweet price tag, Kickapoo State Park was filled with an abundance of wildlife. Turkey, deer, Canadian geese, as well as an extensive system of hiking trails. Canadian geese, we are in the middle of Illinois, so uh, middle of July, presumably on their way back to Canada to uh, enjoy the summer and then be heading back down this way and ultimately um, I don't know where they end up, if they go as far as Mexico. I've never seen any of them in Mexico, but uh, I know that butterflies uh, follow a, a migration sort of like that. They sure aren't very shy. I've never really heard of anybody hunting these. I don't know if the meat's any good. It'd be kind of cheating. Right in there is the Vermilion River. Tomorrow I'm making a journey into Chicago or thereabouts. I don't know if it'll be in Chicago proper, but uh, somewhere around there and check on a deep dish pizza. For this pizza mission, I wanted to be as close to Chicago as possible and still be in the woods. This way, I hoped I could try the closest approximation of true Chicago deep dish without also experiencing the crazy Chicago traffic. Amazingly, I found another 10 buck a night campground and rode my growling belly towards Illini State Park. Riding through a bunch of back roads in uh, central Illinois, a few hours south of Chicago. You know, I woke up feeling in a good mood and, and just everybody I've interacted with and talked to today has just been uh, totally nice and cool and not strung out on dope. So that's a big, that's a plus. I almost feel like I'm, I've stepped back in time. It's a shame that there's not much out here uh, aside from corn. So anyway, I'm heading uh, a little south of Chicago and get some deep dish pizza. There was something really special about riding through these vast expanses of cornfields. A feeling of being back home somehow. Maybe it was the friendliness of the people who tended these fields, or simply the zen of being deep into a journey miles from anywhere. Either way, I wished it would last forever. It was noon when I reached Alini State Park, and since the pizza joint didn't open until 4, I headed across the Illinois River to Marseilles to see about another Chicago specialty, the Italian beef sandwich. I knew I was going to be consuming some major calories today, so I made camp and hiked over to town. I've been so bored for the past couple of years because I keep going to the same places, but uh, just to be exploring something, you know, somewhere I've never been is just uh, awesome. So this is a, a well-earned and uh, welcome cheat day. I've uh, been pretty good on my diet, uh, except for yesterday <laughs> with the skyline chili, but you know, I'm, uh, I guess, about an hour and a half uh, outside of Chicago. This is a place called Baba Luke's, uh, Italian beef and uh, hot dogs and pizza and stuff. Already seeing a lot of the obvious importance of sports in uh, this part of the country, so. Delicious looking cannoli. Italian beef, smells like beef broth. Italian. I've never tried one of these, but a buddy of mine from Chicago uh, raves about him and always complains he can't get one where he lives.
Thank you. A pretty cool city because you got all the good culture from like uh, the big city, but it's a small town, more laid back, people more friendly. Nice little campsite in the great state of Illinois. You got all this nice uh, canopy up there outside of a little town called Marseille or Marseilles, depending on who you ask. So I went up and got an uh, Italian beef, which was a, a Chicago specialty that uh, I'd never tried. It was to me a little bit like a Philly cheesesteak without the cheese, but the spice mixture was good. Um, I'd like to try some other examples just so I can know what's a good uh, Italian beef. So I've been looking forward to this for days, although I'm not in Chicago and to get true Chicago deep dish, one has to travel into Chicago. I ain't traveling into Chicago because I really don't like driving through crazy cities like that, even though I do. Um, apparently there's a pizzeria just about a mile or two up the road that is supposed to be the best example of Chicago deep dish pizza that's not in the city of Chicago. So uh, this is Sam's Pizza, let's go. Let's see what we got here. Pretty convenient. This place is right across the bridge over that way. Sam's Pizza. Oh, it's got a special type of box. The deep dish. Ooh. Looks pretty good. This is very good. A very respectable pizza. It's not in the traditional style of the Chicago deep dish in which you have the cheese, the ingredients, and then the tomato sauce on top. Um, so it's a little different. They sort of uh, varied a little bit from the tradition, but the flavor of the crust is awesome. It's it's a very good pizza. A lot of uh, pizzaiolos or pizza makers uh, will actually use uh, a certain proportion of cake flour, uh, which is extremely fine, extremely soft. I just noticed as I'm eating this, it has a very sort of um, a light, almost a cake-like consistency. The Italian sausage that was used for that pizza was uh, of extremely high quality. You could taste the fennel seed, uh, which is a key ingredient in Italian sausage. It tasted like it was made fresh. Uh, back home in Virginia, the stuff that we get is from the grocery store. It's in links and uh, it's just not the same at all. So hanging out here and uh, lo and behold, there's another biker. What's your name, brother? Uh, Jake. Jake. Yep. Okay. So Jake is on a, uh, a Triumph Explorer over there, correct? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Cool uh, bike. I might walk over there and take a look yeah, at yeah. it. So where, what's your story, man? You've been on the road for two years? Yeah. Two years. Uh, I'm, I'm originally from Maryland. Okay. Uh, I, I've just been traveling around the country, been to 30, 30, or, 42 different states, 32 on that bike. I, I, I test video games for a living for, for work and 
to live out of my tent. That's it's perfect, man. Life, man. You save so much money. Oh yeah. When yeah. you when you yeah. live like this. I mean, you got to figure rents six hundred to twelve hundred dollars. Yeah. Depending on yeah. where you're at and. I'm not spending that much money. Out so. here, ten bucks, and even so, even some campgrounds get crazy, man. I don't typically oh, yeah. do the campground thing unless, oh, me neither. unless I can find one like this. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, for like yeah. ten bucks a night, oh, and it's I'm heading into Wisconsin tomorrow. Okay, I, but I, I, uh, I was there last month for a little bit, and then, and then for like two nights this month. So. Did you find anywhere like this out there cheap? Uh, so in just south of Lacrosse, if you're ever that way. Yeah. Uh, there was a scenic overlook uh -huh. with a really nice free free site. Oh, fuck yeah. Lander. Awesome, awesome, um, awesome. I actually have everything to do, oil change, which I'm actually going to be doing one tomorrow. Cool. Uh, you find an auto parts store? Yeah, yeah, I'll just put up on the center stand, do it right there in the parking lot. That's good. Get, let them recycle the oil for find, me. <laughs> find, uh, you probably already know this, but if you can find and dig around in the trash uh -huh. and find an empty oil jug oh, yeah. and just cut a... Uh -huh. Uh, a hole in it and you make your own oil pan you already yeah. know that oh yeah two years on the road you you pick up stuff like that <laughs> yo, yo. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean i love being on the road though it's, it's it keeps the bad thoughts away that's for sure yeah i totally hear you on that man um i find that one of the evils of our society i can't quite escape is the social media yo yeah <laughs> uh i've been getting more onto instagram to try to like build up my following on instagram so i can try to get some sponsors or something like that yeah what's your what's your instagram it's uh nomad husky rides okay nomad husky rides yeah all right yeah, yeah. i will i'll have that on the video whatever you google ends up in the reel it seems yeah. like so i've got videos of these guys these chinese guys yeah, yeah. doing all these crazy motor rebuilds <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i can't stop watching yeah. i just keep and i'm like man i've been doing this for like an hour yeah and i had no idea there was actually trees in illinois <laughs> yeah, I, mean. I thought it was all cornfields but this is it almost reminds me of back home you know they got hills and yeah so uh actually two years ago was the first time i rode through here. Um, I stayed in uh, Wyandette, Illinois. Uh, had a crazy night. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah, I ended up in an abandoned building just like wrecking shit with some locals. <laughs> like, crazy night. All right. Yeah, I wouldn't want to do a valve adjustment on that. Yeah, yeah. Just to take off the, the tank and everything. Just a pain in the ass. Oh, yeah? You gotta take the plastics off. Yep. You gotta take off like three of these. There's like three different oh, things connected. God. You gotta take that off. Yep. Man, I bet it rides like a dream though. Yeah, yeah. I was stuck in Montana for two months because my drive shaft broke on me last year. It broke? Yeah, the U joint. Uh, completely just. While I was going 90 miles an hour, wow. it was terrifying. The U joint being like in, yep. in there? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The fork seals going out on me. I oh, really? Three of them go out on me. No shit. So the first time, it was like this left one that went out. Yeah. The shop wanted $500 to do it. I went on eBay and bought two new ones, or well, used ones for like 200 bucks. Yeah. And then that they both ended up going up on me, so. These have got the inverted forks. Yeah, yep, yep. Uh, I wonder if that has something to do with it. Uh. Well, it definitely has something to do with the, the fluid completely running out of them. I can see that. Yeah. This is JB welded. <laughs> this is JB welded. <laughs> I like it, man. Yeah. A buddy of mine's got an old road glide that's uh, basically held together with JB weld and, and zip ties. Yep, yep. Zip tie. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, I was on a trail and uh, a rock hit my, my kickstand sensor. So over oh, here, fuck. it's just all taped up with some electrical tape, so my bike will run with all the time with the, the kickstand right here. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, so me and Jake are out here talking. We're discussing <laughs> the uh, the criteria uh, as far as, like, saying that I've been to another state. Because sometimes I feel guilty because I feel like, okay, I just rode through a state for 30 minutes, and now I check it off my list, but I feel like I really haven't been there. So what constitutes going to another state or riding through another state you know that's the question but jake has uh probably the best answer i've ever heard so 
What's that? So, like, for me, I, I haven't been to a state unless I, I peed in that state. <laughs> Whether I'm in an airport, just in a whatever, as long as I pee in that air, airport, I've been to that You've state. You've been there. You've marked your territory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. I love it. So yeah. I'm just going to... Whenever I'm at, to put my conscience at rest, if yeah. I start feeling guilty, oh, I'm just riding through this state for 30 minutes or whatever, I'm gonna make damn sure oh, that yeah. I pee yeah. in that state before moving on. One time I, I was just riding along the, the Ohio uh, River? Turnpike. Okay. Uh, right, right below Michigan. I got off the Turnpike, paid like $5 to get off the Turnpike right there, <laughs> just to go into Michigan so I could pee and then got back on the Turnpike and kept going to say I've been to Michigan. <laughs> All right, so finally got uh, enough of a break in the weather. I'm heading north to Wisconsin, west across the southern part of Minnesota, and making some miles. Headed north into Wisconsin towards the spot that Jake had told me about, passing through the city of Madison and into Amish country. It was interesting that these country roads were all numbered alphabetically, A, B, C, etc. Riding through the lush green hills, I could have almost sworn I was back home in southwest Virginia. I made a point to slow way down when passing one of the many horse-drawn carriages you see in these parts. Clearly I was in Amish country. I have a real soft spot for these people and find a lot of merit in their chosen lifestyle. They've mostly eschewed technology in favor of a much more simple, down-to-the-roots existence, and when it comes to hard work, they're tough as nails. I have a theory that if an apocalyptic event occurs, it's these folks who stand the best chance of surviving. Would I like to live like this, you ask? Probably not so much. I get bored too easy for one, and I really like riding motorcycles and making videos. I do, however, deeply respect these people and their values. What's more, every time I've interacted with them, I've been greeted by warm smiles and kind words. this is a natural formation right here in this rock but this is all rock walls all the way around but it's uh, it's kind of curious there's uh, there's a train track uh, going that way along the river there's camp over there That is one hell of a river. Not sure where it starts. I think in uh, maybe Minnesota. Camps down that way under that tree. There's another one of these sort of bowl shaped depressions. It looks natural to me. I don't think they blasted it out. Would have been a hell of a lot of rock to carry off, but it is curious. Got some nice tree cover to keep me uh, keep the dew off everything tonight. Hopefully it doesn't rain, but uh, there's a bird's nest hanging down 
I am uh, in western Wisconsin, and it's more mountainous than I thought it would be. You know, if you blindfolded me and dropped me here, I would almost think I was back home in the Appalachian Mountains. My uh, misconceptions of the place completely went out the window uh, when I saw that. Did about 300 miles today. A little tired, so I'm getting caught up on my fluids, water and stuff, and uh, just relaxing and uh, getting ready to sit down with my rock table and do some work on the computer. See you in the morning. After an almost unbearably humid evening beside the mighty Mississippi, I headed across Minnesota towards Mitchell, South Dakota. About to make my way across the great state of Minnesota. I got about 675 miles to uh, Sturgis, so pretty foggy out. I got my big jacket on, just sitting here uh, getting coffeeed up uh, so I can tackle this uh, journey. Riding across uh, southern Minnesota now. I've ridden a couple hundred miles. It's about 10 a.m. This is how I dry all my stuff out if I uh, can't dry it out in the morning. If I may stay in a hotel tonight because uh, there's a heat wave coming through. Already now that I'm out of the mountains, the temperature just absolutely skyrocketed. This is one of the hottest places uh, I've ever been. Hotter than, you know, Mazatlan, Mexico in the middle of summer. Bike's doing good, super comfortable, and um, not too windy, so I'm gonna try to put down some miles. For years, I'd wanted to see the legendary Corn Palace in Mitchell, South Dakota. And since it was on the way, this seemed like as good a time as any. With the facade made entirely out of corn husks and cobs, it stands as a proud celebration to South Dakota's corn farming roots. Unfortunately, there was a barely audible song under copyright playing in the background. So rather than fork over 100% of the advertising proceeds of this video to the overzealous holder of said copyright, I've chosen to remove the audio entirely and fill up the space by talking absolute nonsense, which is what I do in most of my videos, so really nothing has changed. With the temperature climbing over 100 degrees, I sought out the cheapest hotel I could find and prepared to cool down for the night. As soon as I pulled in, a girl from an adjacent building began mumbling something out the window. She was tweaking hard and incoherent. A man appeared and tried to start a conversation, but I could only understand a little of what he was saying. I was too stupid to pick up on it at the time, but in retrospect, they had been complimenting my bike and throwing out subtle hints that if I liked to party, I should come upstairs. The whole place had a really nasty, seedy vibe. I moved my bike under these steps and worked in the AC. The weather forecast the next day called for temperatures in excess of 105 degrees. I woke at the ass crack of dawn and headed across the wide open plains. Just around Chamberlain, I crossed the mighty Missouri River where Lewis and Clark had once paddled, sailed, and pulled their boats in their famous expedition to the Pacific. It was all going well until they had to spend a freezing winter in North Dakota, with frostbite being common among the men, including parts of the anatomy where a man would least like it. When spring finally came, the resulting deer and buffalo were almost unfit to eat due to having nearly used up all their fat stores over the winter. They continued to the source of the Missouri and pressed on westward through the Rocky Mountains, which is where things really got rough. But that's a story for another video. As soon as you enter South Dakota, you'll start seeing giant billboards for Wall Drug. A sort of drugstore slash tourist trap that went completely out of control. I'd intentionally skip breakfast just so I could eat here, and with the temperature already about 103, it was time to stop. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So this is a place that uh, to me didn't quite live up to the hype. Uh, it really ended up being a tourist trap. You know, take that for what it is. They wanted to charge me something like 15 bucks for three eggs and a side of bacon. So I said, yeah, all right, yeah, see ya. So uh, anyhow, I'm just uh, sitting here drinking the one thing on the menu that I can afford, which is a five cent cup of coffee. There was certainly a lot of cool stuff to see at this place but I was already sunburnt, hungry, and cranky from the ride. If you're interested, I'd suggest visiting Wall Drug on a full stomach. Well, you know, I came here really wanting to enjoy the place. Uh, I was really excited, hadn't been here before, but you know, if you look at my life, uh, this is pretty much all I have. So it's not that I'm anti-consumerism, but uh, a place like this doesn't necessarily speak to a lot of my needs. The heat was absolutely downright rude at this point with the addition of 50 mile per hour wind gusts coming from my left, as if riding into a blow dryer with a forceful and unpredictable crosswind. Even though I was almost to the Black Hills, this section was among the most challenging of my journey. It is uh, oppressively hot and windy uh, out here, so I'm heading into that movie theater and watch a movie and uh, cool off for a couple of hours. But those are the Black Hills over that way. I got a hamburger steak smothered in mushroom gravy from the diner down the road and stayed in the movie theater for the next couple of hours. The film was pretty forgettable. A movie about a kid trapped in a psycho's basement who's forced to confront his fears to survive. It was still blistering hot when I headed to Sturgis. Being on the road, you live a lot of life within a short amount of time. Over the past week, I'd ridden, hiked, got muddy, found Zen in the cornfields of Illinois, ate some delicious Chicago-style pizza, met another fellow traveler, avoided tourist traps, and nearly roasted to death in a South Dakota heat wave. My journey was now complete.